Welcome back to Kings of the North. We're not dead, and I'm not dead. Doug Maurice, so happy to be back alongside you, perhaps not looking like my typically handsome self. I kind of look like a bedraggled old man who got punched in the face, which is kind of what happened. I want to reassure you about two things. One is the show is not going anywhere. Kings of the North exists. It will continue to exist. We've had an unexpected, unplanned hiatus, but we will be back. And the plan is to be back next week, full swing, when we will be recapping a bunch of our spring games that are happening for our Northern teams this coming weekend on Saturday, April 13th. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Northern football spring games on Saturday. And Bill Landis and I want to watch them and we want to talk to you about them. Uh, the other thing is I'm fine. But I had something go a little haywire, and so I'll explain that later because you're not here for a Dr. Doug health talk. You're here to learn about Northern College football. So we want to show you something, which is sort of like the last thing that I did before things got haywire, which was I visited Boston College. It was my first time there. I went to a Boston College football practice. I watched it for two hours. I took a bunch of notes. I took a bunch of videos, talked to Bill O'Brien and a couple of players afterward. And I put together, with the help of our great producer, Mike Urosowski, a little package about my visit to Boston College that you will be able to watch and listen to here in a moment. But I want to remind you what you should be doing on Saturday, April 13th. And that's watching college football. Because guess what? It's like the first big spring game weekend. Again, seven games for us. Now, listen. There's a bunch of SEC games on Saturday. We're not here to tell you. If, if Maybe you'll stumble across them on the way to a Northern game. Alabama has a spring game. Georgia, Tennessee, LSU. A lot of the SEC teams are getting their spring games out of the way. But uh, we'll let someone else tell you how to find those. These are our seven spring games on Saturday, and six of them will be televised, okay? We have four games at noon on April 13th. One, Cincinnati at noon, not televised, but we'll still be talking about what Cincinnati did in the spring game. Ohio State at noon on Fox. This is kind of like a new thing, a big deal that Fox is showing spring games. They're showing Ohio State this week, Michigan next week. Boston College, where I just was, you'll, you're going to learn about Boston College in a second. ACC Network at noon on Saturday. Purdue at noon, Big Ten Network on Saturday. Then, 1 p.m. Eastern, Utah on the Pac-12 network, which frankly, I didn't even know there was still the Pac-12 network still existed. No offense to the Pac-12, but it still does. Noon at 1 p.m. Eastern, Utah on the Pac-12 network on Saturday. Then Penn State at 2 p.m. on the Big Ten network right after Purdue. So you've got a Big Ten network doubleheader. And then 2 p.m. on Saturday, Pitt on the ACC network. So we got doubleheaders. Noon and two on the ACC network and the Big Ten network. Plus, we got stuff on Fox. Plus, we got stuff on the Pac-12 network. Whoa, what a great Saturday for you guys to watch some college football, learn about the teams that you care about. I'm excited to watch them. I'm eager to see um, who's developed, who are surprises, quarterback battles, all these things that we talk about on Kings of the North. Right now, we're going to take you to my visit. This visit was on Tuesday, April 2nd. At Boston College, what I saw, you're going to learn about some players. You're going to learn about what I sort of my thoughts on Bill O'Brien, my thoughts about their practice field. Again, Mike Yorostowski put this together. Let's now go to my Kings of the North visit to Boston College. Doug Maurice here with a Kings of the North visit to Boston College. My first time here on campus. Just watched a Boston College practice here at Fish Field House. Three thoughts coming away from checking out the Eagles here this week. Number one, Fish Field House is awesome. This was built in 2018. You can see here, this is as good as of an, in, an indoor facility I think you'll find almost anywhere. So this is this is a very attractive place. The weight room's in great shape. I think it's a really interesting um, opportunity for people to understand what Boston College football is about. It's right next to the stadium um, in this sort of little football area of campus. It's a beautiful campus. So anyway, like Boston College is kind of cool. So they had this indoor practice. They have an outdoor field here. And again, the facilities race is such a huge deal. Um, I don't know that I knew that Boston College had a place like this, but it's pretty good in for indoor facility. 
Number two, they got some skill guys here. So the, the receivers running with the ones in practice this week um, were Jaron Bradley, who is a transfer from Texas Tech, who's 6'5", and I talked to somebody who's been covering Boston College football for a long time who said they've never seen an athlete like that at the receiver position at Boston College. The way he moves for a 6'5 guy, it is super intriguing. So keep that guy on your radar. We talked about him previously on Kings of the North, but to see him in practice, real deal. Then they have Lewis Bond back, who was their leading receiver last year. They're gonna get him the ball in space a lot, run some screens for him. And I think there's an opportunity to work Bradley and Bond together and draw outside coverage with Bradley and then work Bond underneath. And I think that I, that's gonna be a really interesting duo. And then Jaden Skeet as a second year receiver who jumped on the scene last year a little bit. These are three real skill guys that teams are going to have to deal with. Now, the the execution of getting them the ball is still a work in progress a little bit. Tommy Castellanos, they call him Tommy here. We call him Thomas on the show. Um, a quarterback who really can escape. And I asked Bill O'Brien about that, that having a quarterback like that who has that escape ability. They ran some red zone stuff here where he did get out of the pocket a little bit and try to make some throws. They don't want to rein him in is what Bill, Bill O'Brien said, but um, th they think he's doing a good job learning the new offense. This is all new with this whole new staff here, but you can see that the level of execution is maybe not all the way there. This was Bill O'Brien thought not a great practice. They were just coming off Easter break. So they were maybe a little sloppy to start offensively, but the potential with the skill guys is definitely there. And then number three, it's just fascinating to watch Bill O'Brien run this program here. His wife went to Boston College. He's a, a, a native New Englander. And this is a program, and I, I don't know if you realize it, Boston College has had winning seasons in 20 of the last 25 years. This is a winning program. I, I don't think sleeping giant is the right word, but talking to some people here, they wanna be the kind of place that doesn't let the best Northeast high school players escape. They think, okay, like if Georgia or Bama or Ohio State, somebody like that's gonna come in and take a kid out of here, so be it. But otherwise, they want those kids here at Boston College. And I think Bill O'Brien, with his resume, head coach of the Houston Texans, head coach at Penn State, long time uh, with the New England Patriots at Alabama. But New England roots, I think, I think there really is an opportunity here for Bill O'Brien to build something. When you think about, again, what has been a winning history, um, what Boston College offers as a campus, these, these facilities, and you can see him taking control of the program. He was getting a little mad at the practice that I watched. He was having them try to run six straight no huddle plays in practice. And so there was a little bit of miscommunication sometimes of when you're supposed to sub and wait, we want to run all six play, uh, all six plays before we substitute. And there was some frustration there, but it's like the guy's in charge, right? So this is a guy with um, a longer resume than you would probably expect for a place like Boston College. But I, it feels like there's a lot of potential here. I don't, I don't know how much is going to come together in year one. Um, but if it does, it feels like the kind of team that could rise up and bite somebody this year unexpectedly, because I think there's a ceiling there. Obviously, Bill O'Brien talked about consistency, and that's the deal for everybody, right? But he thought the defense is getting better. It looked like the defense was stopping the run a little bit at the practice that I watched. They were getting physical. They had a couple big plays where they blew up receivers and, and knocked balls free. But, man, they have a set of skill guys and a dynamic quarterback that could make it very interesting here. So anyway... My first time at Boston College, kind of cool. We hope to do more of this here on Kings of the North, come live to places in the North, you know, talk to Bill O'Brien. He said he'll come on the show. So we hope to have that uh, down the line and have some of these Eagles come join us. So if you ever get up to Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, you know, swing by and uh, hopefully we'll be swinging by some other Northern campuses down the line. For now, Doug Maurice for Kings of the North. All right, so that was our Boston College visit. And I don't know if you could tell if you're watching on YouTube, I don't know if you could tell. I look terrible right now. I understand this. Look how young and fresh I was. Although my hairline was really kind of far back at Boston College. In New England, my hairline recedes. What are you going to do? Um, I don't think you could tell, but as I was recording that video, my retina was detaching. And so, you know, maybe I could be studied by future uh, eye surgeons to say, can you watch a retina detach in real time? Because that's what was happening Tuesday morning uh, in Boston, Massachusetts for me. So my plan, I had gone on a trip with my family that took us to Boston. And the plan was that my wife and daughter, well, they did, they did do this. My wife and daughter flew home on Saturday, and then I was going to drive back and 
uh, I was going to hit our three Northern ACC teams and stop at Boston College on Tuesday, stop at Syracuse on Wednesday, and stop at Pitt on Thursday. And here's the deal. We're going to have shows next week. That is the plan, unless there are like complications with my eyeball or something, which I certainly am not anticipating. We're going to get back to normal. If you don't want to hear about the details of what went wrong with my eye, you can stop watching right now. That's all this is. We're now in eye talk. Kings of the eye. Eyes of the north. Actually, eye of the north. But here's the thing. Whenever I hear about something going wrong with someone from a health standpoint, particularly if they're a little younger, and I certainly am not looking young right now, but I'm only 50. I always think that's terrible. I feel bad for them. And then the second thing I think is, could that happen to me? And so I want to know what went wrong with them to see like, whoa, should I be on the lookout for that? So I want to be very upfront about, because like if people are like, yeah, man, you, have you watched Kings of the North? I haven't been on for like, a, like more than a week. What happened? Well, this is what happened. And I, I'm going to tell you, it's not going to happen to you. Okay. So it's very bad timing. I had a detached retina in my right eye in December, which prevented me from covering the college football playoff games live. My plan was to go to the Michigan-Alabama game at the Rose Bowl. We were going to have Bill uh, go to the Texas-Washington game at the Sugar Bowl. Then we were both going to go to the national championship game. My retina detached in my right eye. I had emergency surgery. I couldn't fly. We scrapped all those plans. It was terrible timing. My left retina detached on April 2nd, last Tuesday, and I decided I'm going to cut my trip short. I started seeing a shadow in my eye, and uh, I, I thought, I can't go to Syracuse. I can't go to Pitt. I got to get back to Ohio because this is happening. And I called my eye doctor, and they said, you should not drive back to Ohio. I was by myself there. They said, you should go see an eye doctor right now. So I, I just found an eye doctor like on, on the Google and uh, went to an eye doctor on the side of the road. And it was unbelievable. They they did two checks of my eyes, and the doctor said, yes, you have a detached retina, and did not charge me. Like, unbelievable, unbelievable kindness. And so the result was I drove myself to uh, Massachusetts Eye and Ear, which is a, a pretty, I think, renowned uh, emergency room and surgical center in downtown Boston. I drove myself there Saturday. Uh, on Tuesday, excuse me, they checked me out. I had emergency uh, retina surgery on Wednesday. My wife flew from Ohio to Massachusetts on Wednesday to be with me. That was unexpected. Uh, and then we drove from Boston to Ohio on Thursday. We, my wife drove with me sitting with my head down because you have to sort of have your head down while your eye heals. And so for the past week, I've been lying in my home with my head down because that's one of the things you're supposed to lie face down basically all day for a week. So I'm more than a week out from surgery now, which is why I'm taking this brief uh, moment to explain to you why Kings of the North hasn't been on. So that's what happened. My vision is certainly compromised still right this moment, but I'm, I can, you can see me. I can see me. My head's little. I can, can I see me? Yes. No, I look normal. Um, so I am diabetic. I am nearsighted and I had previous cataract surgeries, which is all three things that can lead to detached retinas. Plus in this second surgery, the surgeon was kind of like, man, you got loose retinas. It's, he said, like, you got loose retinas, man. And you're in, I was, how I say, did I lose my ability to do a Boston accent? What is the best accent? I believe that this Yankee has a loose retinas. So like I have weird tissue in my eyes and it's like I'm more inclined apparently to, to having detached retinas. But the good thing is I only have two retinas and they have both detached and they've both been reattached. So I hope this is it. So. um you know, we're a new show, and sometimes when a new show, like, all of a sudden doesn't do anything for nine days, people are like, well, that's it. That didn't last. So I don't want you to think that. It's just me. The show is great. My body is disintegrating. But I think I'll be fine. So I have a follow-up uh, on Friday afternoon, and uh, I think that I can get off my face at the very least. I have, I can shave. It's been very hard to shave and shower when you're lying on your face. This is not me at my best, but I am my, I'm wearing my uh, don't never grow up. Never grow up hat because um, sometimes when you're a 50 year old man whose body is failing him, uh, you feel like, man, I wish I'd never grown up. So, anyway, that's what's up. Sorry. Thank you. Thanks to my boss, my owner. Thanks to my co host. Thanks to my producer. Thanks to everybody who um, has been like, hey, are you okay? Thanks to all my friends, my handful of friends. 
thanks to my one or two friends who have looked out for it. Thanks to my wife, who's been taking care of me like a baby. She's been awesome. Thanks to my kid. Thanks to you guys for hanging with us. And sorry, we haven't been here. So I just wanted to tell you what happened. I don't know if you care. Sometimes people's misery is, is interesting, even if you don't care about them. Talk about it over dinner. Hey, yeah, that guy. I listened to the show once. Both his retinas detached. But you're fine. It's not you. It's me. All right. The plan. The plan. Fingers crossed. Retinas crossed. Is to get back to normal next week. So we got a lot to do. We got a lot of ideas. I think maybe if you watch on YouTube, my old yellow wall might be the curse of the yellow wall. Although I had a detached retina with a yellow wall. And I have one detached with a yellow, one detached with a gray. I'm going to shave. Hopefully, my my eye had, was even more bruised previously than it is now. Um, but I thought, I asked my wife, is it uh, eye patch or no eye patch? And she said no eye patch. So I still think an eye patch thing might, it could be my look eventually, but not yet. Not yet. So um, sorry for being a complete freak. But th and thanks to Boston College for having me out there. I had a great time. And thanks for Syracuse and Pitt for being cool about me at the last minute, being like, hey, you guys said I could come. Now I can't come. So I want to get back out there. But it reminded me like it's good to be on the scene for places. So it makes me in, in August in preseason camp makes me want to go to Minnesota and Nebraska and Michigan State and Indiana and Penn State and Michigan and Ohio State and ever and try to get out. If we can get, get out to Washington and Oregon and get out to Colorado and Utah and BYU, it would be awesome because I just feel like I have a better handle on Boston College football through one two-hour practice than I did before. Like I, I, I kind of understand um, how good their skill guys might be, how Thomas Castellanos really fits in this offense, you know, where their strengths and, and some weaknesses might be in the trenches, that kind of thing. I, like it really helped to be out there. And the one thing I didn't mention there, I, I don't know that I knew this. Um, like maybe their fourth receiver and like a really good leader for them is uh, Dino Tomlin who is Mike Tomlin's son, the Pittsburgh Steelers head coach. So maybe we'll get Mike Tomlin on to talk about his kid. So anyway, that's too much on my eye. Thanks, as always, to our great producer, Mike Yurstowski, who uh, put that package together. And uh, thanks to you guys for A, being here, and B, indulging me. And those things are linked because if you are here, you're always indulging me, whether my eyes are falling out of my head or not. I'm Doug Maurice. I'm still here and we're still here. And that was Kings of the North.